present the first of our um, complex model uh, in this optimization series, which I call as EOQ with um, shortage allowed. So let me explain this model. So in, in our usual EOQ models that we have, what we assume here is um, that our uh, inventory, if we the standard EOQ chart, if we make, I start with um, some inventory, uh, allow it to go to zero. I again build up inventory. I allow it to go to zero. I again build up some inventory and so on. The story continues and the shaded region will be my, uh, I, I'll use this triangle to calculate my average inventory. So as usual, this is time T and this is inventory I and this is our order quantity Q. That's how it would work. Now, in, in this different model, which is slightly different with shortage, what do we say is, is we allow for shortage and we assume that um, there is a cost of shortage, as in I might have to create special deliveries or whatever, um, or give a customer a discount or something of that sort. But shortage is okay and um, I don't lose customers. They'll eventually buy um, even if the product is late. So the way to design this is um, I create a very similar looking chart only thing is there is a zero which is I put it somewhere here and in exactly the same fashion I will start ordering and at some point it goes under zero I'll start ordering some point it goes under zero I'll order again and the story continues so what I have is my inventory is this this is my average inventory here. Uh, I'll use this triangle. And um, this part that I have is uh, my shortage. I have to use this triangle to find my shortage um, that I'm going to incur. So wh what we have here is uh, I'm, I'm still ordering the quantity um, Q, which is this. But the big change here in this case, I allow for some shortage to happen and the shortage is reflected by this S. So the maximum inventory that I reach is this, which I call as Q minus S. Now the question that immediately comes is what's the advantage of allowing for shortage? Well, it, it's, 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 if you look at this diagram, let's suppose I did not allow for shortage. If I did not allow for shortage, in the, that case, my inventory would have been something like this. And uh, my average inventory in that case would have been the white shaded region plus this blue shaded region. So because I allowed for shortage, now my inventory has come down. My average inventory is not the white plus blue. It's only the white shaded region. And of course, there is this additional cost of shortage, which is the green shaded region that I have to take care of. So here what we have is a trade off between the blue region and the green region. And uh, we have to decide Q and we have to decide S. We need to decide two things so that um, this trade off is managed and the total cost is minimized. So now to be able to model this, I'm going to redraw this uh, diagram um, separately and then uh, try to create some kind of relationships. So scroll up. I'm going to model this here. This is my inventory. This is my zero point. I start from some region here. I keep ordering. And at some point I hit at zero uh, or the shortage S and I reorder. So let's remember this part is when I have inventory. And this part is when I have shortage. I will call the time for which I have inventory as T1. And I will call the time for which I have shortage as T2. And I'll call 
the total time as t. And on the x y axis, my order size is q. This is my order size. That's the amount of inventory I order at one time and uh, it goes into shortage and this is the allowable shortage. So this zone here at the top becomes Q minus S. That's the maximum inventory that I will ever have. So remember I introduced similar triangles in the introduction video. So we'll, we'll use that similar triangle. I'll create two relationships and we'll use them in a minute. So the first relationship that I'm going to create is this relationship between T1, I'll erase this, the relationship between T1 and T. Now I want T1 divided by T. If, if you look at this, what, what, what T1 is this part of the shorter side. This is T1, the shorter side here. And T is the larger side. So T1 and T would correspond to Q divided by Q minus S divided by Q. Try to look at it. T1 here, which is this shorter side up till here, and T, which is the full distance up till here, they would correspond to the other side based on Q minus S upon Q. Similarly, T2 by L, T, T2 by T corresponds to S by Q because T2, the smaller side, which is this is our T2 here, this corresponds to the smaller side S and T corresponds to the entire distance, which is the total time T. Now let's have these um, numbers here and um, go back to some calculations. What I'm going to do is try and calculate the average inventory first. So, and then I'll calculate the average shortage. So for the average inventory, what do I have is, remember, I have inventory for time T1, so which starts from Q minus N, S and ends at zero. And from T1 to T2, or end of T1 to end of T2, I, I, I don't have inventory. So I need to find the weighted average. And the way to find weighted average is the first part, I know it's a triangle. So I know the average inventory is Q minus S by two times T1. So I, I use that. And I say the first part, the average inventory is Q minus S by T1. I'm sorry. So I have an inventory of Q minus S by two, the triangle for time T1, plus zero inventory for time two, and total time is T1 plus T2. And now I know T1 plus T2 is T. So what I do is remove the zero and it becomes Q minus S by two, T1 by T. And I know this relationship I've already derived. So it becomes Q minus S by two times Q minus S by Q. And my average inventory therefore becomes Q minus S, the whole square. Um, let me rewrite this. It becomes Q minus S the whole square upon 2Q. Slightly complicated, but I guess we need to learn to deal with these complexities. So this is my formula for average inventory, which I'll use in my model. Similarly, I need to find my average shortage. So average shortage, which is exactly similar um, calculations with different numbers. So I know that uh, if I unzoom it for um, the time T2, I have a shortage of which starts at zero and the maximum is S. And uh, for time T1, I don't have any shortage. So the average um, shortage would be um, S, S by two times 
T2. It is for the T2 plus 0 into T1 divided by T1 plus T2. And so this formula can be rewritten as S2 by 2 times T2 upon T because T1 plus T2 is T. And now I know T2 by T. I know the formula from here is S by Q. So I use that and I write is equal to S by 2 times S by Q, which becomes S square by 2Q. So these are um, the two very important relationships that um, we have derived um, in this situation. And now all we have to do, we have designed the model. All we have to do is copy these formulas um, in Excel and um, say, use my solver to minimize, optimize. Uh, minimize the total cost. So that's what I'm going to do next. I go to my Excel screen where uh, I've already pasted the formula that I would have used if I had to use a formula. And uh, if you see here, I've also calculated the answer. We know this should be the answer. And to make our life a little bit faster, I've already put in the names. So the shortage cost is $5 per unit per year. So my order quantity, I'll, I'll just assume some number, 500. Shortage, I'll assume some number as in say 100, and these are not dollars, these are uh, general, they're not a currency. Total holding cost, um, let's go back and bring, copy paste that um, item that we have and bring it here. On Excel, so. I have too many windows open. Yeah, I'll... Reduce the size so we can see it. All right, now I can see the entire thing. So my total holding cost, my average inventory I first need, which is Q minus S by 2 square, Q minus S raised to, sorry, raised to 2 divided by 2. This is my average inventory. And this I have 2 times Q. This is my average inventory and this I have to multiply by my holding cost as we usually do to find the holding cost, which is CH times P. Wonderful. And then my shortage cost, I take the average shortage, which is equal to the S square by 2Q. times the shortage cost which is CS and then my total ordering cost as usual the same thing that we have um, sorry equal to D divided by Q you can see how e easy these nomenclature makes writing the formulas in English times the ordering cost, CO, and my total cost is the summation of the three cost, total holding cost plus total shortage cost plus total ordering cost. Wonderful, we are done. I go to my friendly neighborhood solver, data solver, and ask it that it has to, um, objective is to minimize T, uh, it has to be minimized. I can change Q and S, GRG nonlinear, and I ask it to solve. Um, it might take a little bit of time, but if you look at this, I get the exact same number 5266.24, which I had obtained by the formula. All right, so the message here again, we could model a complex problem here. Uh, but what is this saying? That I'll order 5,266 every time and I'll love about a shortage of 1215. Um, I hope um, this slightly complex model made sense and over time I'm going to add even uh, more.
போர் என்ற வெற்றி